Hey, what's going on, family? So today, this is Marcus Williams coming to you live with another um, video here where we're just going to talk about some, some simple and basic concepts about investing, okay? So if you haven't already, be sure to like, subscribe, and share the channel, all right? So just a little bit about me. So once more, my name is Marcus Williams. I do have a background in finance. Um, however, um, I want to be very clear that on this channel, I am not giving out financial advice. Um, I'm not telling you what to do with your money, but I am simply sharing with you the things that I have done and my own personal experience um, being in the finance, uh, financial world, okay? So today we're gonna just talk about some basics of investing, all right? So we're just gonna get right into it. Um, don't wanna over talk it here. So let's just jump into it. So the main thing about investing is that certainly investing is not just for um, certain types of people that come from a certain type of background and things like that, okay? Investing is literally for everyone and anyone, all right? Everyone and anyone can certainly participate in investing, all right? So um, don't ever, you know, put yourself in a situation to feel like, you know, you need to be like this person or that person or you have to have you know, lots of money, or because you may have, you may be in a position where you have a little bit of money that you can't invest. All right. Um, and certainly we're going to show in some other videos, how you can get, how you can actually overcome that. All right. So first thing we want to do is of course, depending on where you are on the economic scale, right. Whether you have little money, or lots of money and you haven't started investing. Okay. Investing, of course, is one of the quick, one of the ways that you can certainly grow and develop your wealth. All right. So now with little money, you can still get started and most likely you're probably working. All right. Whatever your salary is, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're minimum wage or you're making, you know, $300,000 a year, all right? You're working. And the primary purpose um, of working is that most people go to work to pay the bills, right? You know, relatively simple concept. We go to work, we pay the bills, okay? Basically, we, we use our work money to help fund our lifestyle, all right? However, what you want to start to do is find a way. Now, we're going to talk about this on our channel here, but what you want to do is you want to find a way, okay, to while you're working for to, to help fund your lifestyle, you want to figure out a way to take some of these dollars, okay, so that it can work for you. Okay, that's like my little shovel. All right, so that it can work for you and plant little seed. Okay, into the garden of wealth. All right. Now, once you do that and you do that consistently and for and over a long period of time, what you will find, this may happen sooner than later or it may happen later than sooner. You get hopefully you got that. But what you will find is that soon enough, these seeds will grow. Where this income from these investments will start to fund your lifestyle. And then you could put yourself in a position to say whether you want to continue to work or not. Okay. So that's one of the things we want to uh, understand about investing. All right. Now, as mentioned, you know, we certainly want to do this. Uh, we certainly want to continue to do this. Now, when it does come to investing, there's a couple of things that you certainly want to be cognizant of, okay? Um, now, of course, we're going to talk about risk versus reward, okay? And the way that this works is that anything that we do, anything that we do, there's a risk involved and everything that we do. And for that particular risk, 
there's always going to be the opportunity to receive a reward based off that risk. Now, of course, you risk a little, your reward is little. You risk a lot, your reward is a lot. Okay? So now, once we understand this basic concept, we can start to take um, calculated risk to receive a reward based off that calculated risk. All right. So, um, so again, just keeping it real simple and basic. All right. Now, once you have an understanding of this risk and to help minimize this risk, what you want to focus on is diversification or diversifying your portfolio. Okay. So you, you ever heard of the saying, um, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. You want to kind of spread it out, all right? That's the same thing. That's basically what diversification is, okay? Um, so um, another a, a perfect example, just to kind of paint the picture for you, is with your um, diversification, think of it like going to the gym, okay? And when you're going to the gym, the goal or the idea is to have a... Um, to be in shape from top to bottom, okay? So generally speaking, you wouldn't just go to the gym and just work out your biceps, okay? All right, you wouldn't just do that because then you leave everything else up to chance, okay? You have some strong arms, but weak shoulders, weak chest, weak abs, weak legs, weak glutes, the whole thing, right? Now, if we put ourselves in a position to work out everything, now everything has the opportunity to grow, okay? Another example, if that doesn't work for you, is think about a table. This is my table, all right? And if you had a table with one leg, so I'm gonna, Draw this table with one leg, okay? Put something nice up there, maybe a plant. With one leg, so that's just being involved with one type of investment class, which we're gonna talk about next, or having one source of income. If this leg was to break, your table is gone, okay? That's by relying on one thing. But if you had your table with four legs, okay, should one of them break, there's three other legs that can keep this table afloat, okay, until you go and repair this leg, all right? So hopefully that does a simple um, illustration of what diversification is, okay? Now, all right, so now what I want to talk about is inflation and why you really want to look at investing, okay? And putting yourself in a position to have your money grow at a rate much faster than inflation is growing. Now, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about what, have heard the word inflation, inflation, right? Inflation is going up, right? It costs, uh, it's costing me now, um, I can't get the same amount of groceries with the, uh, with the $100 budget that I had two years ago versus today. I'm getting half the groceries. That's due to inflation, okay? So what is inflation? Inflation is the price of goods or services going up over a period of time, right? So, you know, you just take a look at exactly, you know, what we did in our example. So let's say you have a $20 bill, okay? Let's say you have a twenty dollar bill. Now, um, I was I'm, I was born in the eighties, right? So I was born in eighty four. I'm, I'm currently thirty nine. I don't mind sharing my age. So I remember when I first started driving. Okay, when I first started driving, okay, I was able to fill up my gas tank with this twenty dollars. All right. So we're talking about late 
We're talking about late 90s, early 2000s. Okay? I was able to fill up my gas tank with $20. Now today, that same $20 in 20, well, as of this year, 2023, okay, that might, that $20 might put half, half a tank of gas in my vehicle. Right. And this is simply because of inflation. OK. So now inflation, depending on the cost, depending on the goods that we're looking at, they're going to vary, of course. Right. This is an example. Oil. OK. That's going to vary. Um, um, a, a brand new car. That's going to vary. A house. That's going to vary. Right. Those different services and goods are going to vary. But on average, inflation is approximately 3% per year. So that's 3% annually. Okay. So now we have to find a way. So if we're only having income coming in from one source, but inflation is growing. much faster than this is growing. And this could be your job. This could be your business, whatever the case may be. If inflation is growing much faster than this money, then you're gonna find yourselves in this situation, okay? So now how do we keep pace or keep up with inflation? All right, so let's get into it. So there's different ways of investing. There's different types of investments that you can participate in, all right? And we're gonna talk about each one. Okay, so we have, so one type of investment is stocks, right? So I'm sure you heard of the stock market, you know, you go in and you purchase, you can purchase Amazon, right? You can purchase Tesla, you can purchase um, American Express, right? And purchase the stock, all right? You can do the S&P 500, you know, the whole thing. Now, with stocks, on average, annually, over the past 10 years, stocks is averaging about 9% annually. Okay? So if we look at this, and if we have some of our dollars in stocks, our regular dollars are, I mean, our inflation is growing at 3%. So our money is growing 6% faster than inflation, okay? The next area is, of course, you take on a little bit of risk and you want to get in bonds, all right? Over the past 10 years, um, the bond market is averaging about 2.5%. Now, isn't this interesting, okay? So with bonds, and there's a lot of people, you can make a lot of money with bonds. And of course, just like this, uh, this is average over the past 10 years. So some years is higher, some years is lower. Same thing with bonds. Some years is higher, some years is lower. But with bonds, on average over the past 10 years, you're, because it's 2.5% versus 3%, it's a half a percent lower than inflation. So in essence, your money is worth less than inflation is growing, okay? So we got stocks, we got bonds. The next place you could put your money to work for you is real estate, okay? So with real estate, that's you going out there, purchasing properties, whether that's residential or commercial or even land, right? We're all going to include that in real estate. Um, and then you're flipping it or, you know, um, you're doing long-term rentals. And then at the end, you know, uh, you have this income coming in. However, over the past 10 years, on average, real estate is doing about a 13% return annually. Okay. So now 
would we agree so far that right now this is probably a good place to put your money because now your money is growing you know 10 percent faster than inflation is okay so when inflation says your 20 dollars is really worth 15 dollars by having your money here potentially and i'm just arbitrarily taking out a number that same twenty dollars may really be worth, let's say, twenty-five dollars. Okay. All right, perfect. So now the next um, asset that we want to talk about, that I'm going to talk about, and it's relatively new. Well, it's not super new. It's been around for a while, but it's been making its waves now. Okay, and more and more people are hearing about cryptocurrency. So we're going to talk about crypto. So I'm going to add that to our asset classes. Okay, cryptocurrency. Now, on average, okay, on average, um, and I'm going to specifically with crypto, I'm going to specifically because most people have heard of Bitcoin. Okay, on average, Bitcoin is returning 45% annually. Look at that. That's a big jump. Okay. That's a big jump. So again, your money is growing at a rate much faster than inflation can keep up to it. And that is the goal. All right. The next asset class I want to talk about is the Forex market. So the Forex market has been around for, for forever, right? That's foreign exchange and, um, exchanging you know one currency for another okay so you take your us dollar you're going to mexico you get mexican pesos right so on average i don't have an annual for this but what's interesting about the forex market is that on average the forex market is returning check this out on average 10 percent not annually but 10 percent monthly That's huge. 10% monthly. So if we just keep it as simple, that's about 120% a year. Just to keep the numbers simple, right? There's a different way to calculate that. But that's 120% a year, which is pretty cool. So your money is growing at a rate almost 100 times faster than inflation can eat away at it. Okay? So now the next asset class or where you can put your money to help it grow, um, I'm going to call this cash equivalents. So that's going to comprise of savings accounts, CDs, keeping the money in cash under your mattress. <laughs> All right. So. And this is where a lot of people feel safety at. However, on average, this is having a return of half, half a percent annually. So your money is just getting eat up by inflation. Okay, Here, if you thought you were losing money here, you're really losing money here. Okay, you're losing two and a half percent of your money every year on average. All right. So now, going back to a couple of things that we've already talked about. So we talked about the risk versus reward. And with risk versus reward, the more risk you take on, the greater the reward, or in this case, the return. Okay? So for those who think that they're very safe, I don't want to do investing. I'm afraid of investing. I just don't understand it. Okay. Yes, your money is there. You can see it, but it's growing at half a percent a year. And with this growing at a half a percent a year, right? What's happening is that you have very little reward. 
Okay? You have very little reward. Here, and you have very little upside, right? If we look at Forex as an example, we're looking at 120%. So that's higher risk. So that's the potential for higher reward. However, by taking on more risk, there's the opportunity to also take a take a greater loss. Okay. So how do we balance out this risk versus reward? That's where we get into what we talked about previously as well. Diversification. Because you don't know which one is going to grow or go up. You don't know which ones are going to go down. They can all go at the same time. They can all drop at the same time. Maybe uh, this year, bonds go up, stocks go down, real estate go down, crypto goes up, right? Now you have a mixture, okay? And your money is kind of, you know, growing or losing in all these all of these different ways, right? So that's diversification, okay? So now once we have this understanding of those concepts that we just went over, now what we want to do is make sure that we are setting our financial goals. Because depending on your financial goals may determine where you how you're going to diversify your investment portfolio, okay? So as an example, and it's all going to be based off your time horizon. Now, what do I mean by time horizon? That's in essence, when in the future you're going to need this money. Okay. So, and it also determines where you're going to put this money. So as an example, if you're looking to purchase, let's say a, I don't know, a new pair of shoes. Okay. Your time horizon may be relatively short. You know, maybe a month, maybe a couple of weeks. So you may want to put this as an example, keep it as cash equivalents. Leave it in the savings account. Okay. Inflation is not going to impact it that much over the course of, you know, a couple of weeks or perhaps maybe even a couple of months. Right. But if your time horizon is, let's say, so therefore, you don't want to risk this. You don't want to put a lot of risk on it, right? With a potential for it to drop. But if your time horizon is, let's say, retirement, depending on how old you are, this could be 30, 40 years away, okay? So that means your the time horizon is longer. which generally speaking could mean that you can take on more risk for the opportunity for more growth. But most importantly, if there's any potential downside or losses, you have time to make it up. to make up for those losses, okay? So we gotta figure out what your financial goals are, okay? Now, regarding your financial goals, you want your financial goals to be smart. So I'm sure you all may have heard of smart goals. And this should be like this, okay? I'm sure you may have heard of smart goals. And if you haven't, that means that it needs to be specific measurable, achievable or attainable, relevant, and have a time attached to it. Okay. Now, what I like to do is also in, co in, um, in addition to setting my SMART goals, I like setting objectives. Okay. 
Okay. So what are these? This is basically making a commitment, deciding to make a commitment to doing something for a period of time until the results are reached. Okay. So with my SMART goal, if I'm looking at retirement as an example, okay, and I want to have a healthy retirement, okay, so specific retirement, measurable $10 million. Is that attainable? Possible, yes, right? Based off of my time horizon for uh, retiring. Is it relevant? Yes, because once we factor in inflation, my potential uh, lifestyle or living expenses, um, that's going to be enough to sustain me for the potential rest of my life and the time. Okay. Maybe that's 30 years. Okay. So now how do I combine that with objectives? Well, in this account, whatever that account is, and we'll, we'll make some videos talking about this. There's different types of accounts that you can use. As we mentioned, you could do stocks, you could do, um, long-term investing and all that good stuff, crypto and everything like that. So objectively, maybe that's setting up this retirement account. And in this retirement account, I'm, I'm going to contribute $250 every week. That's the objective. So for me to get to this goal, I have to follow this objective and do this every week. Okay. And then lastly, what we want to talk about in terms of your financial goals is what we would call your EQ. Okay. Or your emotional quotient or your emotional intelligence. When it comes to investing, you have to be true to yourself. And what do I mean by that? So most people will look at retirement and say, well, you got 40 years, so you can take on more risk. Well, if you're the type of person, you want to certainly go through a risk assessment. And just because you can take on more risk for more growth doesn't mean that you should take on more risk for more growth because that may not be you. Okay. You may depend, you could be 40 years old. And based off of your experiences that we've seen during our lifetime for most, you know, people in my age group, right? Maybe you saw your parents or your grandparents lose their retirement in the stock market, right? When it, when it dropped down in 2006, 2007, and now you see them, you know, working jobs in their retirement years. So you may want to take on a little bit less risk and that's okay. Okay. You shouldn't, um, you shouldn't be reaching out to people or people shouldn't be guiding you, telling you what you, uh, what you ought to do, but they should be guiding you to let you know, you know, based off of, based off of this conversation and based off what you told me about this, 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 and this, this is the suggested portfolio. for you. And that can be risky or that can be very conservative. And that's just up to the individual. Okay. It's not a, um, one size fits all. All right. So just to start wrapping things up here. Okay. Um, what we did today is we did a couple of things and I'm just going to grab my notes here. So we talked about the importance of investing. We talked about risk versus reward, the different types of investments, how to set financial goals. You want to be sure to educate yourself. Okay. Keep learning this stuff. All right. You may not get this watching this one time. Maybe you might have to watch it a couple times. Maybe you might have to watch, um, a couple of, um, videos that coincide with this. Okay. Stay informed, stay up to date with what's going on. All right. With your, especially with your accounts and don't be afraid to ask for guidance, right? Don't be afraid to ask for guidance. Okay. And when you do ask for guidance, remember to be true to yourself. And once you say that, or once that changes, then your investments or your portfolio should change. Okay. 
So maybe over time you get used to investing. Maybe now you say, okay, I feel comfortable taking on more risk. Or perhaps maybe as you get closer to retirement or get closer to that particular goal, you say, you know what? Um, we made a lot of money. We earned a lot. So let's start slowing things down. Okay. And become a little bit more conservative. All right. So I hope that this video was very helpful. Um, and we'll, we'll certainly be talking about more topics like this. We're going to spend a lot of more time talking about topics like this. Okay. So, um, certainly if you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Okay. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it to your social media. Okay. I'm just a regular guy. All right. Just teaching some basic concepts. I'm not telling you what to do with your money. Okay. And for any topics that you might want to discuss in the future, um, in future videos, or if you want to have a discussion about any of these things that we talked about today, be sure to leave a um, comment, you know, leave a comment below. All right. And um, regarding comments, just know that um, I will never ask you for money. Okay. So if you see somebody talking about sending money or it's a bot or something like that, that's not me. I do not want or need your money. Okay. All right. Do not click on any, uh, any links. I'm not inviting, you know, I, I'm not inviting anybody to the telegram group or anything like that. Okay. However, if you do have questions or if you do want to, um, reach out, please feel free to reach out to me. Okay. My contact information is somewhere on the YouTube channel. Right. Um, and, uh, and I'll also put it down below, right? You can shoot me an email. You can message me on social media. Um, and then, you know, we'll go from there. Okay. So with that, I hope this was, uh, hope this was very helpful. And, um, if we're, if, if we're all set, then I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Come out. Peace.